Welcome to our webcast, and we are going to teach you today the marginal rate of substitution and its relation to the optimal bundle. So, and, uh, and then we're going to go into how to calculate it. So firstly, I'm going to define marginal. So marginal is, in any sense, so in the sense of production, cost, or utility, is the, it refers to the difference for one unit of goods. So in this case, we're going to be talking about utility. So the marginal utility of a good will be the amount of utility that you will gain with one extra unit of that good. So then if we, if we link that into marginal rate of substitution, the marginal rate of substitution is how willing you are to exchange one good of unit X, say, um, for a certain amount of good Y, uh, and all while reaching the same utility in the end. Um, so... Yeah, so like I said, the marginal rate of substitution, how willing you are to exchange one good of unit Y for the good of X. Because we're talking about the optimal bundle, we also have to define budget constraint. So the budget constraint is the line on which and under which, as we will show in a graph in a moment, um, the, that is on that line and under that line is all the affordable bundles because that is the amount of money you have. Okay, so your budget constraint is basically um, all the money you have. So it's your your budget for good X and good Y. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Yeah, and then uh, so if we put show this on a graph, if you have here on the graph, you have. See, we have y on the y-axis and good y and good x on the x-axis. Now, this diagonal line going from y to x, that is your budget constraint. So, on that line and, uh, and that entire area under your line are all your affordable bundles, all the sets of good x and good y that you can buy. Your optimal bundle will always be on the budget constraint because that is when you are maximizing um, your budget but also your utility. So these indifference curves labeled U1, U2, and U3, those are three different indifference curves. Each indifference curve has a set value utility, so say every point on U1 has the utility of 10, and U2 has the utility of 15, and U3 has the utility of 30, for example. So as you can then see, the further you go from the origin, the higher your utility is, so your optimal bundle will be on the point where your budget constraint meets the highest possible indifference curve. And so in this case, that is where uh, the budget constraint meets U2. Uh, yeah. So then if you mark that on X and Y, we can then figure out, you can then read off the graph how much of good X and how much of good Y you should buy. Say, for example, um, oh no, you can also see that the budget constraint crosses U1. So at the point closest to the Y axis, <coughs> there, that may, could potentially also be an optimal bundle, but because that is not the highest indifference curve, you're not maximizing your utility. So therefore, this would be an affordable bundle, but it would not be optimal. Mm. Okay. Um, with the, another way to prove this mathematically is that the we'll go back a bit. The um, is that the slope of the budget constraint is the price ratio, which is uh, defined as Px over Py. Px over Py. All right. And marginal utility at that point will be marginal utility of X over marginal utility of Y. So at this point, you can equate those two equations. You can say MUX over MUY equals PX over PY. And therefore, you can also say that the marginal utility of X over the price of X equals the marginal utility of Y over the price of Y. 
and um, that is the definition of marginal rate of substitution mathematically. How much are you maxim basically are you maximizing your utility for every last dollar for the last dollar spent? Perfect. Okay. Now let's try this out with a question. So <laughs> the scenario is. It's Roger's fifth birthday coming up, and uh, he wants to know how many balloons and cupcakes he will need for his party, or he can, he should buy for his party. The, the budget for this party is 100 euros, the price of cupcakes is 10, and the price of balloons is Y. His utility is five. 5, sorry. <laughs> and his utility uh, is defined as U, X, Y, X, R, Y equals X times Y. So first we should write down the price of x and price of y. So let's say that cupcakes are x, so therefore px equals 10, and py equals 5, and our uh, budget m equals 100. So we can then write our budget constraint by saying 10x plus 5y equals 100. However, because we are going to use the Lagrangian Lagrange, we're going to use the Lagrange multiplier. We need to rewrite this uh, equal to zero, so you end up with five x plus oh ten x plus five y equals no minus a hundred equals zero. To, um, to then set up the Lagrange multiplier, which is basically just a method of optimizing a, uh, an equation, we have to write L, <laughs> L <laughs> equals your utility function, x, y, minus lambda times 10x plus 5y minus 100. So that's L equals your utility function minus lambda multiplied your budget constraint to set to zero. Um, okay, then we have to take the partial derivative according to each variable in the equation. So partial derivative of L according to X will equal Y minus uh, 10 lambda. And then we do the same for y, so the partial derivative of l according to y equals yx minus 5 lambda. And then again, finally, for lambda, the yeah, partial derivative of l according to lambda equals uh, minus 10x minus 5y plus 100. Because you have to remember to take into consideration the, ne uh, the minus sign that is in front of the lambda. Now, to find out uh, how much of good x and y we will actually need, we need to first set uh, y and x in terms of lambda. Oh no, first we need to set each, each partial derivative uh, equal to zero, and then we set x and y in terms of lambda. So you can then say y equals 10 lambda, and x equals 5 lambda. So from here you can see this is a pretty simple equation. You can see that y will then be equal to 2x as y equals 10 lambda and x equals 5 lambda. Half of 10 is 5. So either y equals 2x or x equals a half y. Um, we then can plug this back into our final uh, partial derivative, the one according to lambda, to then get minus 10x minus 5 times 2x plus 100 equals 0. Um, and then if we multiply that out, we get minus 10x minus 10x plus 100 equals 0. So 20x minus 20x plus equals 100. So x equals 5. So there we have the first half of our optimal bundle, x equals 5. And then if we pl uh, plug that back into our original budget constraint, 10x plus 5y equals 100, we get 10 times uh, 5 plus 5y equals 100. Oh, I didn't mean that one. Which one? This one, right? Yeah.
Oh, it's prettier than the other one. Okay, minus 10 <laughs> times 5 minus 5, 5 plus 100 equals 0. Minus 50. Yeah. Uh, yeah, minus 50. <laughs> Equals y. <laughs> Sorry, I can't do the other way around. Yeah, so 50 <laughs> equals 5y, and therefore y equals 10. So our optimal bundle in this situation is uh, is x is 5 of x and 10 of y. Um, we could check this using the price ratio, as mentioned before, that the ratio has to be equal to the price ratio. So if we take the price... So our price ratio, remember, was Px over Py, <coughs> which equals 10 over 5. At this point, the MRS is equal to the price ratio, which is Px over Py. And at this point, our, our bundle, or the slope at that bundle, can be, equal, can be found by doing y over x which is 10 over 5. The gradient of the indifference curve is equal to the price ratio right now because mm -hmm. that has to meet the budget constraint at mm -hmm. this point. However, we can also calculate the gradient of the budget constraint using purely the amount of good x and good y that we have found, mm -hmm. which is 10 over 5. Yeah, is um, y over x, which equals 10 over 5, which therefore also equals 2, and therefore it is shown that the marginal rate of substitution is equal to the optimal bundle. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thanks for watching, guys.